competition at the Yonex Thailand Open. A Super 1000 event on the HSBC BWF World Tour. The first Super 1000 events since the All England Championships in March last year. Of course, we have had a World Tour event in the interim period. That was the Denmark Open. That was the 750 event. Uh, but now we're lucky enough to have three tournaments in three weeks here in Bangkok. Well, that's what's happened so far. We'd all started with Busanan Ongbang Rangpan, three-time former finalist here in this tournament, safely coming through her first match. And next up on court number one is the former world champion and former world number one, reigning All England champion, so Victor Axelson, the number four seed, up against the home player, Sitikom Tamasin who is the second-ranked Thai men's singles player. Two matches ago, we saw the first-ranked men's singles player, as you can see there, Guntapong Awang Chalon, safely through in the battle of the bronze medalists against Sai Praneeth, a former champion here at the Thailand Open. Well, after this men's singles, we're going to be treated to women's doubles, and then we're going to finish with men's doubles and the Olympic bronze medalists from England and recent winners of the Denmark Open, Ellis and Langridge. But this is the second quarter of the men's singles draw and you can see that it's the same section as that match I was talking about just two matches ago. Wang Chalon coming through that, as you will have seen with us a little earlier. And the beaten finalist from 2017, Jonathan Christie coming through in three games. On court one, men's single, Victor Asselson from Denmark. So I was telling you during the Cyprus Wang Chalong match that we had Versus four former champions and two former finalists in the men's Thailand. singles draw. For Victor Axelson, the tall man from Denmark. Umpire, Emmanuel Kabu Isile from Botswana. Service judge. And here Wajana is Sitikom Thomasin. Sporting the all-white kit that he won the All England in. In fact, it's not quite the same kit because that was a special edition kit from sponsors Yonex for the All England Championships. But it's the 75th anniversary of Yonex a foundation and some very special kit presented to the Yonex sponsored players in celebration of that 75 year anniversary. So Victor Axelson only making his second appearance here at the Thailand Open and this only the second meeting between these two players first time they met was the first round of the All England and as I was telling you that Victor Axelson went on to win the All England he obviously won that first round encounter against his opponent of today so 27 years of age now, he turned 27 on the day we all arrived here in Thailand a week ago yesterday. Lost in the round of 64, there was 64 in the draw, the only other time that Victor Axelson played the Thailand Open and that was 10 years ago, lost out to Wong Chun Han. And for Victor Axelson, as you saw briefly, he is a former world number one, currently number four in the world ranking. And for Sitikom Tamasin, 25 years of age, born here in the Thai capital of Bangkok. And he's making his eighth appearance here. He was actually a semi-finalist way back in 2013 as an 18-year-old lost out to Kadambi Shrikans, who went on to win the title. So, enjoyed success at a very young age. 
did Thomasin. As we look at our court officials, Emmanuel Hebutsi of Botswana, Rampar for this one, and Wayana from Indonesia, the service judge. So as far as the Thai player is concerned, well, perhaps his biggest win to date was the 2019 Macau Super 300 events when he beat Shi Uchi of China in the final in three Versus games. For this man, his list Thailand. of achievements is quite astonishing. Olympic bronze medalist in Rio, world champion um, in Glasgow uh, in 2017. Uh, in fact, he's got a couple of medals so from the world championships. Reigning European Sicily. champion, he's been European champion twice. And almost a year ago, 10 months ago, won the All England title when appearing in his second consecutive All England final. And for Victor Axelson, winning the All England rather nicely, Steen. It was in his 30th career final he won the All England. That's rather nice, isn't it? Yeah, it is. First Danish title at that event in 20 years. 21 years. Yeah since Peter Gader in 1999. And just for to sort of put some symmetry on it, he was also the 21st Dane to win the All England Men's Singles title. I put that incorrectly, I think, <laughs> because I don't think it was 21 different men's singles players. No. It was 21... 20 one time. I started thinking back yes. and I couldn't remember <laughs> no. 21 different. No, no, I expressed that very badly. I do apologise. But the 21st Denmark. Danish title. Yes, and that's Lisa correct. Denmark. On my left, Citicom Hermesil, Thailand. Victor Agustin to serve. Love all. Play. So the former world champion, Victor Axelson, getting his first round encounter underway. One love. You know, that first round at the All England Championships last year was won by Victor 21-15, 21-13 in just 40 minutes, so pretty comfortable. Oh, yeah, string's gone. I could hear that. I had a message from our head Tim stringer. Your One. stringer. Oh. Yeah. Tim. Tim Willis. Yep. And he was saying that before the tournament started, they'd received 450 rackets and they're already restrung 300 of them. Wow. And that's before the tournament gets underway. Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of players having <laughs> rackets <laughs> lying at home waiting to get restrung. <laughs> Especially Not being to a by tournament in nine months. Yeah, especially by the excellent stringers here for the title sponsors, Yonix. Missed that one as well. Yeah. Just by a whisker. It's going to be interesting wow. to see Victor in this tournament here, which is his first after the um, victory in All England, because he went through surgery in, uh, uh, I guess it was late September, so he was not ready to play Denmark Open. And I've seen some videos from his practice, mm -hmm. and he looks oh. really, really strong in his legs and so on. So uh, it could be a very strong contender here for. Uh, this tournament, if um, the sharpness is there in the uh, shots. Oh, that's a nice shot from Citycom. Thank you so far. Three, two.
Yeah, that's a good shot. Not a full smash at all, and not a um, a drop shot. Much faster than a drop shot with um, cold axles and by surprise. Lovely shot. Good angle. Same type of shot. Four, two. Dane has ever won the men's singles title here at the Thailand Open, but only one Dane ever in the final. And he happens to be sitting on the coach's bench right now. Oh. Kenneth Jonasson, 16 years ago, 2005, lost out to Mohamed Hafiz Hashim in the final. Silicon Tamasil challenges called out. and Jonasen. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Oh! Save it over. Three, five. Play. delightful shot isn't it it's been very successful Thanks, playing Six, those shots as um, three. Thomas in seems like they stop a little bit uh, too early for Axelson's taste it's not just a, a, a sideways move you have to move sideways and a little bit forward that's not very easy oh, oh that's on the line that's a super shot yeah Six, four six He's got to be careful about lifting Five, to that Axelson deep six. forehand corner because yeah. that wasn't too deep. That was a little bit short and it got what it deserved. And, and the same as the um, the rally before. That I mean, it's it's, it's only uh, a matter of centimeters before the shot is is a good shot. But when it's missing, then it becomes a really bad shot because Axelson is I guess is 194 and then his arm and then his racket, so it comes down from. Quite an angle. The reply from the Dane. Oh. Straight smash once again down the backhand side Six. of Tunnison oh. from Axelson doing the damage. That was a quick glimpse of the only Dane who's been in the men's singles final here at the Thailand Open. was uh, awarded uh, coach of the year in Denmark Kenneth Jonas and across all sports no, I was reading so that that's tremendous yeah here he is not a year full of sports but still shows that um, there's recognition of badminton and uh, people have noticed the work that Kenneth has been doing with both Victor and um, Anas Antons and Rasmus Gemke who's sort of the the young coming up, Seven, taking nine, over from six. Jorgensen and Witzinghus. Interesting first round encounter. Gemke Witzinghus. Yeah. yeah. Go. 
Take it over. Seven. All. This is a great rally. Oh, good hand. It's going wide. Out. Yeah, it's a super rally, though. Six over. Eight. On. Yeah, it's a long rally, too. Yeah, he was um, getting to those uh, very sharp um, sort of drop shots, steep smashes from. Um, Thomas in Axelson was uh, getting to them, but um, he wasn't really making anything dangerous of them. So there could be a lot of um, uh, psychology in uh, continuing to do it if you're Thomas in, and, and rely on that it's going to sort of, uh, in the long run, take the power from Axelson's uh, legs being uh, forced to uh, lunge down on the front court compared to uh, oh. seeing the immediate success in the beginning of um, of the game here and then that the Dane is sort of covering it and getting it back so it's about um, keeping the faith so to speak Ten. Nine. Well, that's good judgment Inchaba. from Axelson. And he has the advantage, a two point advantage at the mid game interval. Yeah, clearly long. You're right, Steen, his legs do look a little stronger, Axelson. <laughs> Så det bliver, så du løfter for langt udefra, det er for nemt for. Det er det primære. Så nyde de lange dueller, for det er dem, der de giver dig point bag. Det er godt. Det ser ud som om Axelsen may have picked up a little bit of a cold, sitting in the air conditioning in a hotel room, perhaps vastly different to the training environment. But tell us, what was Jonasson saying to him there? Could you ma make any of it out? Yeah, there was something about the um, the shots that are played uh, a little below uh, or a little uh, longer than the, f the, um, the service line. Uh, what he should do, um, sometimes challenge, sometimes just uh, play it over him. But I li especially like the last part where he said, uh, you've got to stand uh, forward, you got to stand close to the net, especially on this side here, because uh, um, Tamasin will have trouble playing the back line with Nine. accuracy, so Axelsen can move a little bit forward, making it a little bit easier for him to get to those shots that we've discussed, the clever shots from um, from Tamasin. So that, that, in my opinion, is the uh, most important uh, thing. Yeah, that was nice skill from Tamasin. 
I think you said one more thing just at the end, but I forgot what it was. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's really, really difficult to keep track of all those things. Yeah. But they're always communicating a lot, Victor and, um, and Kenneth. Well, we were talking about a lot as change for Sai Pranith since he was last on the competition court getting married. And for Victor Axelson, a lot has changed for him too because he's become a father. Oh. Yeah, yes. Baby daughter. Born either under or just after when I did my open, I can't really remember. Yeah. 15th of October she yeah. was born. Yeah, Vega. Yeah. Reminds a little bit of uh, Victor's vic uh, nickname in Denmark, which is Vigo, which is a common Danish um, boy's name. On court two, mixed double, Kot Sun Hua and Lai Shevon Jamie from Malaysia. It's gone long. He can push his centre of play Lava quite a bit forward, Axelson, but um, most important is that I, I think that now he feels a lot more confident on court compared Umpire. to the first 10-15 rallies. From Service jump. Fabio Beto from yes, Italy. That's nice. Oh, he's hitting winning smashes from 16, either side of 11. the court, whether it's the round-the-head position as it was on that occasion, or whether it's been from his deep forehand corner. And hitting those round the head smashes is often a good sign that Victor feels confident. That corner can easily stiffen up when he's um, a little bit tense or nervous. In so fact, it was that round movement to the round the head position that I identified when he was quite young that I thought that needed work. And my yeah. goodness, he has worked on yeah. it. It's super now. Yeah. But that's that's something that you can um, be almost sure about when it's about uh, big so that if someone something needs work, then mm. the work is going to be done. Yeah. Yeah, true professional. Uh, no. Previous round the heads. Winner had been Thank straight down the line that time. Inter Axelson oh. going across court. Did awfully well to be able to play that across court at all. Yeah. He played it with accuracy. Yeah, good choice. Had he uh, given it more power, I'm afraid he would have um, put it wide, but um, that enabled him to um, stay in balance and control the shot. Very much a resemblance of um, the match in all England where Victor seemed to be in, um, in full control. Absolutely commanding the rallies at the moment, isn't he, Axelson? It's a handsome lead. Oh, that's wild. 
There's game point opportunities for the reigning All England Five. champion Victor Axelson. Game. Oh. game. 21-12. So when you consider he was 8-9 down, that is quite remarkable. Looking very much in control at all, Dane. 17 minutes for the opening game, So there's quite a conversation between the two Danes there, coach and player. Did you catch any of it? Yeah, I caught, I caught a very important thing. Victor, the first thing is that is now I'm playing up against the wind, right? Second game. Uh, and Kennedy was sort of like... Uh, and, and he's not, he's playing with the, with yeah. the drift now. Uh, but it's extraordinary. It's, um, yeah, how, how can a player not know that beforehand and even sense it during the whole of the opening game? Yeah, yeah. Th that was the reason One. why he needed to push no. his uh, centre of play forward because yeah. he was playing up against the drift on that game. And, and the thing is that if it's not correct, what, what if... Um, I can understand that Kennedy is a little bit reluctant because he's not probably not totally sure. He's sitting down in a not so good position. So, so for him to be absolutely sure, certain, uh, even for us to be absolutely certain about the drift, it's a little bit difficult. It's the first yeah. Danish match on this court. Yeah. Um, so he didn't want to say no. It's the opposite way around. On the other hand, he wasn't. He was reluctant in, in the saying to Victor, "Yeah, you're right." Mm. But going in thinking you play up against mm. the drift, where you in fact wow. play with the drift, that could totally take away all your self-confidence in no time. Yeah. You've got to know that sort of thing. If you're going to choose ends, it can make a difference. Yeah, but it was very difficult for the Danes to, to know, um, except for the... Um, for the warm-up, um, that was the only way that he could know because sometimes it's a little bit different from court to court. But they've had yeah. players in action in, um, in the two uh, adjacent courts, so that's probably why uh, Jonas was a little bit hesitant. I remember, um, the former Chinese coach, he's also been in Malaysia, Korea and Indonesia, Li Mao. Yeah. He was a smoker. And he had his lighter on court, so he just lit his lighter to see <laughs> which way the flame moved, so he could easily uh, gauge the drift in the hall. That was clever. Yeah, Maybe well Jonas should start. <laughs> Wouldn't be allowed nowadays, no. would it? <laughs> Gosh, how times have changed. And he's, he said one other <coughs> significant thing. Remember that um, when you lift, you have wow. to lay low in the legs. Uh, the, they're expecting attack from uh, Tamasin. But the thing is that 
since 9-8 where Mix has sort of had to settle in. Then Tamasin ha has had extremely big problems scoring points on the Dane and that was also what we saw during the All England. It's drifted wide. Six. One. Wide. So seven straight points. Seven, one. Oh, that was clever from Citicom Thomasin. Thanks over. Two, seven. Yeah, Victor was expecting a short. Yeah. Sort of punch clear on the, the backhand action. Yeah. That's extraordinary. Axelson did a full pirouette on that defensive shot, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. My goodness. Three, well, Citicom had a, a really good opportunity very, very early in that rally to make the kill. And I kept thinking from that moment onwards how he might regret that he didn't <laughs> fully commit on that. But he won the rally in the end. But that, that's, that's one of the things where I feel perhaps um, a number of the Thai players could still, singles players, both actually men's and women's singles, where they could still improve. Because, I mean, they have Ratchanak Intanen, who has absolutely wonderful technical skills. But if you look at the other players in the top of the women's singles department and the men's singles department, I still think that they could uh, improve their technical skills and their accuracy, their shot quality, that could still be improved a lot. In my opinion. You, so there's still Eight. room for development, yeah. even though they have a, a, a big batch of players. waiting for that. Mm. I think the rally Nine, he played uh, was two rallies ago where he tried to play the front court two times in a row. That was I saw some possibilities in that for Thomasin, perhaps even three times in a row. Yeah. And attacking and sort of I mean Victor is one ninety four. So it's obviously we should be careful playing <laughs> high shots at him. And it's tough for him to, to bend for the uh, shots on the front court. So whenever there's a chance, of course, that should be um, sort of evaluated from the opponent's perspective. So how is Victor doing today? How is he doing in the long run? If we keep, keep uh, pounding him on the front court, will he be able to withstand? If we play high lifts to the back court, so he can't intercept. But it just seems like they try to put pace on it, and that gives Victor excellent opportunities to intercept. So 11-3, oh. the advantage at the mid-game interval. And Victor Axelson, the <coughs> former world champion, looking very much in command of this match. Thank you. 
Well, that seemed very difficult to actually hear what he was saying there. I certainly didn't. Uh, I couldn't hear what he was saying. No. But here, this is actually one of the situations where if, if Victor can play five, six rallies and, and just play them to a draw, then I would be tempted to um, to advise them to, to play a little around court, play play some clears, play some lifts, and see how um, how things are. Get used to the arena. Um, I know that Lindan did when he was playing. He could easily play a long first round match that he was absolutely certain of winning, just to get used to the playing conditions, and that would benefit him later on in the tournament. Great cross stick there from uh, Axelson. Oh, he hesitated on that. Yeah. Thought about leaving Four, it. 15. I think it was too much to the right of his body. You need to hit that really, really high over the right shoulder to be um, successful. seems to me as 14, if four. Thomasin is just running out of ideas as to how he's going to win the points. Yeah, uh, I totally agree. Oh, my goodness. That's terrific. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that timing. Yeah. That's a fantastic shot. And yeah. Gets the right leg in front when he lands Victor Axels. And then when you do that in the front hand corner, you can, like there, you can play straight, you can play cross. It's impossible for the opponents to. Um, to gauge really well where the shot is coming. I remember in Peter Gale's youth, he was fantastic at that shot. Well, he's really given us a demonstration here this afternoon, has Axelson. 16 4 the lead now. And the result, I don't think, is in doubt, barring catastrophe of an injury. Oh, look at that net shot. Look at that. That is perfection. 17, 4. This crawls up the net and just goes over. Look at that. Yeah. 18, 4. Five, 
sounds interesting to me. Axelson looks as if he's so eager <laughs> to be back on court again that he's been caged up and hasn't played since he won the All England title. You know, and he's just loving being out there on court. Whereas some of the other players, we've sort of seen them, oh dear, I'm not match fit. I've, you know, and, and this, I think, is a very good sign of his psychology. Yeah, it's, it's about what you're telling yourself. Mm. Um, is it a big problem that there's been this lockdown or is it a possibility? Yeah. But it was still, I mean, it's interesting to see how... Where was he after his um, long uh, period of um, not playing badminton, being um, uh, having surgery yeah. for his ankle? I don't think we can say exactly where he is here because the difference between the two players has been too big. Yeah. Uh, so we've got to see a tougher opposition to really gauge it. But what we've seen, her, seen so far has looked um, has looked good. Match point opportunities. Match point six. Oh, That'll do. That'll do Eight. very nicely. Well, he looks in terrific form. Two straight Next games. Twenty-one twelve. 21-6. A match lasting just a fraction over thirty-four minutes. Yeah, he should be pleased with that. Look sharp, look eager. And he's through to the second round beating City Com. 21-12, 21-6, Victor Axelson, the number four seed here at the Yonix Thailand Open.